Hi, thank you for joining me for the fourth session in our series titled Introduction to Puberty Education. I'm Wendy Sellers, a registered nurse and certified sexuality educator. I'm also the author of Puberty the Wonder Years. In this video, we will dive into some of the strategies for answering student questions during puberty class. Three things to consider as strategies for managing student questions. Before you answer the question, think about these. They'll help you understand the question and make your answer manageable, short enough for this age group. The first strategy is ask yourself if it's a fact or opinion question. The second strategy is to ask yourself what your goal is in answering the question. And the third strategy is to always use best practice. Let's look at each one a little more closely. So the first strategy, ask yourself, is this question about a fact or an opinion? Here's how to tell the difference. A fact is something that's provable. It's something that has data, our experts agree upon it, and so you can prove it. Keywords that tell you it's a fact question are if the question includes dates, uh, numbers, science, historical events, current events, or nonfiction. Now, on the other hand, an opinion question is someone's personal feeling or idea or belief or value. There can be as many opinions as there are people in the world. And so there is no one right answer. It's a person's opinion. Now, words that will tip you off as to whether it's an opinion question are things like, I prefer, I think, I feel, I believe, and of also words that are comparisons like, this is bigger, better, that's worse or bad. And so those kinds of questions, those kinds of words tip you off to an opinion question. Let's practice distinguishing between the two types of questions. Our first example is, what age does puberty begin? Answer in your head, is this a fact or an opinion question? Yes, if you said it was a fact question, that is true. Because we have data and medical professionals who can tell us when puberty begins. Now, while there is an age range when puberty can begin, it varies from individual to individual, it's still factual. And you can look up the answer to factual questions if you don't know the answers and get back to your students. Here's our second example question. When is the right age to have sex? Do you think this is a fact or an opinion question? Yes, this is an opinion question because people have a variety of answers to this and there's no single answer that's based in fact. What word was a clue to this being an opinion question? The word right. Yes, if you're asked a question, is, is it right or wrong? That's an opinion question. And it's not your job to share your personal opinion with your students. It's your job to help them think critically and learn how to form their own opinions, values, and beliefs. Now, with this question, while it's true that states have laws about the legal age of consent, that doesn't mean that the legal age of consent is the right age to have sex either. Let's look at a formula now for answering opinion questions. This will help you deal with these types of questions. It's called the SOY formula, and it goes like this. Some people believe this, do this, value this. Other people believe this, do this, or value this. You can Figure out by talking to your trusted adult and getting more information to help you form your own opinion or value or belief about that. So the soy formula is some people do this, other people do that. You can find out more. Now, with the question that I gave you as an example about the right age to have sex, we could say something along the lines of, thank you for asking that question. Different people have different opinions about the right age to have sex. Some people believe that you shouldn't have sex until you're able to handle the possible consequences. Other people believe that you should wait until you're married. You can talk to your parent or other trusted adult to find out what they think. 
One more thing that you should know is that state law in Michigan says it's illegal to have sex before age 16. All right, so that was a sample answer to that question about opinion. Notice that I use the soy formula, some people, other people, and you can find out more. And then I did add the state law because that did apply to this question. All right, the second strategy is to ask yourself, what is your goal in answering the question? Most questions can be answered multiple ways. And if you answered in all the possible ways, it would create a very long answer. And students this age group do not sit for long answers. So you want to keep it short and simple. So focusing on your goal for answering the question will help you keep your answer short and simple. So here are some possible goals that you might have when you formulate your answer. Do you want to clarify misinformation? Maybe the question has some mis misinformation in it. Do you want to review previous content that you just taught in puberty class? Do you want to promote safety among your students? Would you like to point your students to a resource that they could access related to their question? Would you like to encourage them to talk to their trusted adult about the topic in their question? Maybe the question calls for exploring a range of values, maybe because it was an opinion question. Uh, maybe you would like the students to be more inclusive because the question was worded in a way that showed some biases or stereotypes, or you were just talking about how to be more inclusive, and so you want to point them to being more inclusive. With this age group, you want to pick a goal, the most important goal for that question, and be brief. So here are some possible goals for answering a sample question. Let's say the student's uh, ask, what happens if a girl misses her period? Well, perhaps my goal is to clarify misinformation. If that's the case, I might want to answer something like, when people first begin to menstruate during puberty, the menstrual cycle might not be regular. It's helpful to use a calendar to keep track of the first day of each period and how long it lasts. So that's one goal. What if I wanted to have the goal of reviewing previous content? I might answer like this. Remember what we learned that periods typically happen once a month. However, sometimes a period might not happen. One reason is if a person is pregnant. If a person has not had sexual intercourse, penis and vagina sex, they can be sure they aren't pregnant. So maybe I have the goal of encouraging them to talk to a trusted adult. I might answer like this. Anytime a person is unsure about what is happening during puberty, it's a good idea to check with your trusted adult. Remember to pick one goal and be brief in formulating your answer. The third strategy is to rely on best practice for answering student questions. As teachers, as educators, you answer a million questions a day on a variety of topics. And you're probably already using many best practice strategies to answer those questions. With puberty education, you use the same strategies, but it's even more critical to follow good practice. Let's review some best practice strategies and add some special ones for puberty related questions. So here's some good practice strategies. Affirm the person for asking. If we believe all questions are good, and we do, we want to treat the students as if we believe that by affirming them. Even if we can't ask, answer the question in class, even if we don't like the question, even if it's a question we don't understand, we always want to affirm the asker. We want to assess their prior knowledge. So you could uh, ask for clarification about what they mean, what they already know about that topic, and see what they already know so you know the baseline for answering it. We also need to know the true meaning of the question because every question can have multiple meanings. Uh, and so be sure you know the true meaning before you launch into your answer. We also wanna clarify terms. It's good to not assume that students understand what terms mean. So if they use a slang word, define it and give them the dictionary term to use instead. If it's a dictionary term, define it. Maybe the student who asked the question knows what the term means, but maybe the other students don't. So always define and clarify terms. Use the KISS principle, which is keep it short and simple. 
students in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade have short attention spans and they're concrete thinkers. So we wanna be short and simple. And then ask if we answered their question. Let's say we gave a brilliant answer, but the student is still looking puzzled. It may be that that's not really what they were asking for. And so asking them if you answered the question allows you to know if they're satisfied with the answer. And if not, they can ask it a different way. So here are some additional tips related to puberty class. Review your ground rules. Uh, this would include classroom rules, but it also it would include the guidelines for discussion for sensitive topics like puberty. And if a question is asked that violates ground rules, you can remind them of the ground rules. Accept slang terms because that's the only language that your students have. And then define the slang term as slang, give them the dictionary term, and remind them that we're going to use the dictionary term from then on. Repeat the question. Repeating the question allows all of the students to hear the question that's been asked. And it also gives you some think time. And it also allows the student to say, wait a minute, that's not really what I meant. And they can clarify the question and then you can understand it better. Pause. It's, care it's important to carefully compose your answer. And so there's, there's no time limit. You don't get extra points for answering quickly. So go ahead and take the pause you need to compose your thoughts, select your goal, decide if it's a fact or opinion question, and then compose your, your answer. Admit if you don't know the answer. No one knows everything. And we all know a little bit. And so if you don't know it, just let the students know, hmm, that's a really interesting question. I'm not sure of the answer. So I'm going to get back to you tomorrow or whenever, and I will research the answer and let you know what I learned. If it's a, if it's a simple enough question, you could give the students extra credit points for bringing the answer back to class the next day if you want to, instead of you researching the answer. But be cautious with this because we don't want to send students to the internet um, looking for answers on certain topics that might lead them into adult websites or sexually explicit content online. And then know your boundaries. Every school has rules about what you can and can't teach in puberty education, what questions you can and cannot talk about, and topics that are forbidden. And so know your boundaries. It's not worth getting fired just to answer the question. If you can't answer the question, be sure to refer them to their trusted adult and or a website or a hotline number and or refer them to someone else in the school that can help them with that question, such as the school nurse or a school counselor. And so know your boundaries, but help the student find the answer somewhere else if you can't answer it. I love this quote, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Your students are curious, especially about themselves. And so helping them discover the answers to their questions is a privilege and a joy and sometimes entertaining. Now it's your turn to plan how you will apply this information. What new tip for answering student questions will you try 